I will hand it over to you, Stephanie. So I just wanted to start uh, just with a moment um, for us all to stop and really think about um, our self-compassion because I, I want you to acknowledge, you know, this is a very difficult scenario we're all in. And uh, I feel like we all need to give ourselves that wiggle room to, you know, be a little bit easier on ourselves because, you know, this is unprecedented and it's a very difficult time for everyone in a lot of different ways. So I think that's just important to acknowledge. Um, so here's a slide uh, focusing on CMH Ontario. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Canadian Mental Health Association so you get an idea of what it does. So we actually have CMHA National and that oversees the entire country and we have provincial bodies. So we have CMHA Ontario, we have CMHA BC. Um, so we have them across the country and what happens is each provincial body oversees the branches in their province. So in Ontario, we have about 30 branches and they provide the frontline services, um, anything from housing to um, therapy, um, to, uh, to justice issues with, with uh, mental health. So they provide the frontline. Um, so these are just a couple of stats of how many people we employ and how many people we see per year. So Mental Health Works, which is the workplace um, program that I work under, is under CMHA. So here I just want to go through um, the reality of the situation just so we can kind of acknowledge uh, what is really happening with mental health. Um, studies have shown that about one in five will experience a mental health problem each year and it's actually shown and a lot sorry a lot of researchers are saying that it's actually closer to one in four will experience a mental health problem. Um, and in terms of uh, your entire life, so in your lifetime, stats say it's one in three. So, you know, I usually stop here to really let it process that, you know, mental health issues are common. I don't want anyone to feel alone in that. Um, and, you know, that's part of dealing with stigma. You know, even though the numbers are high, we're not necessarily talking about it and trying to break that down. So the stats on the bottom is, are more so about the workplace and mental health. Um, the first one I'll mention quickly and we kind of move on because these are, are more so about uh, organization. So about 500,000 people miss work every week due to a mental health issue. And you really have to stop here and think because it's not uh, the same people every week. I mean, if that were true, you wouldn't have a job. It's different people every week. And why that's important is because it really makes you see again how, um, how extreme the issue really is. About uh, women aged 35 to 44 are more likely to report that most of their days are experiencing uh, quite a bit to extreme uh, levels of stress. Uh, again, I mentioned stigma earlier. So the perception of stigma associated with mental health issues are really prevalent among racialized populations. Um, so it's just another thing to consider stats wise. Sorry. So again, this is just kind of diving in a little bit deeper. Um, so studies show that the intersection of race, gender, and age complicates the experience of mental health stigma among uh, young Black women of Caribbean uh, descent living in Canada. So again, stats kind of show um, how gender, how race, how culture also impacts your mental health. So it's really the takeaway here. Um, I wanted to finish this with a positive note. So women are actually more likely to seek help for their mental health than men. So you know, I, I really want you to focus kind of um, on that good point and, you know, don't feel um, hesitant to reach out yourself for help because um, you, you shouldn't be afraid of that stigma and it will, it will help you and you should know others are, are doing it as well. So this slide just really focuses on um, what's been happening right now in terms of COVID-19. So this one is really showing, you know, if you're a mother during this time, you know, no matter the ages of your children, um, or if you're a caregiver, it's, it's a very difficult time. So, you know, the media is doing studies or talking to people um, and it is shown that mothers are having a little bit of a harder time uh, just with juggling everything, uh, you know, the kids, housework, work, whatever it may be, they're having a bit more uh, difficulty with that. So this slide really just touches on how COVID has really impacted mental health. Um, and it's just basically saying that people are anticipating uh, our numbers are going to be higher in terms of anxiety. Canadians have actually reported that. Um, and a lot are kind of anticipating and feeling that depression will blow up as well. So again, 
just acknowledging the reality of our situation, what's happening in the world. Um, and I just want you to think about that in terms of you shouldn't feel alone. Uh, it's not just you struggling if you are. So this slide is something we do like to touch on because it, it is important. So this slide is really about the fact that these three types of health, so mental health, physical health, and social health are all connected. So it's very difficult to have um, really good mental health if you're not having good physical health or social health. Um, you know, if you're running every day, you're not really doing the other two or working on the other two, they might suffer. Um, it's very uh, intertwined. They're all very strongly connected. So, you know, it's also important to kind of focus on what you're doing for yourself in, in all areas. So this is our mental health work spectrum. So I really want you to focus on the center here where it says balance. So balance is where you're feeling great, you're confident, you know, you have stability, you're secure, you're feeling resilient, um, you know, you're really feeling great. What happens here is that you know, we're all thrown off, um, but thrown off balance by certain things in our life, right? If it's a stressful situation, if certain things are happening, um, nobody's going to stay balanced 110% of the time. A lot of us will be thrown off. And uh, the thing to note here is that how well do you bounce back? Um, if you're having an issue bouncing back and you're staying off balance, it's going to be uh, very difficult for you to, to kind of return to that space if you don't have anything to cope. So, you know, it's your coping skills, how you handle stress, um, you know, are you making sure you see your friends and family, uh, that sort of thing. So how you, what helps you bounce back to where you're in the middle. So an important thing to note here is if you're thrown off balance and you don't have coping skills, you're going to stay in that place for longer. So again, um, you know, kind of what, what was the most recent stressful situation you had that you worked through? Imagine if you were stuck in that stressful place for a long time. So that's really where things kind of start to build up in terms of mental health issues. Another thing to note here that's rather important is that balance looks different for all of us. I don't want you to think, you know, you know, your friends or your family, what they do will help you stay balanced. It's what you do. So if that's exercise, writing, um, painting, it's very, um, it depends on the individual. So I just want to uh, make sure you you look at that as a uh, something that you control and, and it's something that you do and it will be different um, from others. So I just want to start uh, with an audience question. So the question is, what stressors throw your mental health off balance? So I just want you to take a second to really think about uh, what's impacting your mental health right now and what's throwing you off where you can't kind of bounce back or you're having trouble bouncing back. Have you guys got some ideas written down? So I can see lack of sleep as one, sleep apnea, not eating well, COVID-19, loss of job, which is sad. So, but a lot of them are, you know, not being able to sleep, not being able to eat, okay. um, financial obligations, difficulties with families, um, uncertainty, yeah. uh, difficult situation at home, uh, not being able to work. Uh, this is good one, social isolation, back to your earlier slide, slide right? So not being able to socialize, depression, uh, feeling vulnerable in social situations. Okay. So a lot of, lot of great points, yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're seeing some similarity here, right? We're, we're all dealing with loneliness and isolation. That's really something really difficult to, to face, especially because we can't see our family and friends. Um, a lot of people are experiencing that, anxiety, not being able to sleep, eat, um, you know, worry about your finances or your position at work or finding, finding work, right? So these are kind of the, co the common things that are occurring. Um, I will be touching on certain, uh, those certain, to sorry, sorry, certain topics listed, I will be touching on later on in the presentation and giving you kind of takeaway skills and programming that can help you. So thank you for that. So this is just uh, about problems that will kind of arise if you're really thrown off balance, right? So like changing your thinking, changing your mood, um, if you're having a lot of distress, impair functioning, other issues, right? The one thing I, I really want you to gather from here is that um, when it becomes a mental illness, it's about time. So, you know, we all kind of have bad days, bad weeks, but if you're having weeks of consistent issues, that may be something where you, you want to talk to your, your healthcare provider 
and maybe look into um, doing something further. So this is just a little overview of stress. Um, you know, a little bit of stress is good. It kind of keeps you going if, you know, in school or work, but it's really when the stress um, is becoming a barrier for you to bounce back or it's turning into a disorder, like you're, it's, you're not regulating yourself and you're feeling very high levels of anxiety and stress, um, that's when it becomes an issue. So again, this is the same spectrum and we're, we're really just showing on the right people who are having difficulty bouncing back and kind of what happens and what they may be experiencing. So again, this is just certain things with stress, like where anxiety goes up, uh, tension and pain, your physical health goes down and that goes back to, you know, mental health, social health and physical health connecting, uh, productivity goes down, et cetera. So that's just showing you that. These are some risks and resources. Uh, risk, stress, trauma, illness, and others. A lot of us are struggling with health anxiety because you're fear for your own health or the health of your loved ones. That's something that's common that's occurring right now. So these are just some resources on the right. I will touch on some of them uh, later in the presentation. So similar to uh, stress, this is anxiety. Um, I want you to know like it can happen to anyone if you, you do have kind of a more longer term anxiety issue. And again, these are just some things that are gonna increase irritability, restlessness, if some of you are having trouble sleeping, um, concentration goes down, sleep and energy. So again, this is kind of just being mindful of what's happening in your life and what may be impacting it and how it may be uh, manifesting. So this is the cognitive circle and cognitive behavioral therapy is something you can use to uh, treat depression, uh, low moods, anxiety. And I just want to bring this up because it's just an important uh, diagram that CBT is based on. So, you know, your thoughts kind of lead to your feelings and your feelings to your actions, and then your actions influence your thoughts and you're kind of stuck in this, this pattern. And, and, you know, CBT is really about stopping you at the thoughts and, and kind of assessing things um, and changing your thought patterns. So it's just something to really kind of look at and really think a little bit uh, deeper about. So I did, uh, I did include a few quotes just to kind of take a second to think and, and focus on. So this one says, sometimes the worst place you can be is in your head. So I think a lot of us are experiencing that right, that right now in terms of having anxiety and stress. We're kind of really, you know, stuck in our head uh, and it causes anxiety and you're thinking and ruminating on certain negative things. Um, so, you know, how do we get out of that and how do we uh, take comfort in, in socializing and, and those sort of things. So I'm just going to focus now about how we feel, how do we feel less lonely. So isolation and loneliness, I, I want to take a second just to uh, briefly touch on this because isolation and loneliness was actually an issue before COVID. Okay, so many of us were feeling, um, sorry, some of us struggle with uh, isolation and loneliness before COVID. So. COVID's just really um, enhanced what a lot of people are feeling. And, uh, you know, even if you didn't feel it before, it's new to some people as well, just because of what's been happening and the restrictions and what we can do. So this is just a little bit of emphasis on how prevalent it is. So at any given time, almost 50% of Americans are feeling alone. This, uh, unfortunately, we can't apply this to Canada. Canadian studies are coming in the next year or so. Um, studies uh, in other countries have shown that um, it's actually young people under 40 who usually report feelings of isolation. And again, this is pre-COVID, but I just want to dispel kind of the myth that uh, it's usually a much older person. Um, so it's, you know, I think a lot of people go to that, like an elderly person who lives alone. That's not necessarily true. Studies have shown it's likely people under 40. So. I just want you to kind of <clears throat> understand that, you know, it was an issue before COVID and it's increasing much more um, since uh, we've had to deal with these, uh, these new rules. So this is another audience question that I would love to get some answers. So what do you do to stay and feel connected to others? And then we'll, we'll just give you guys a minute or two to kind of uh, brainstorm and we'll talk about you know, how you're feeling and how you're dealing with it. So I can, um, I can share some of the comments that are coming through in the chat section. Um, they're saying gaming apps with friends. Mm. This is good. Um, chat people up, phone conversations, uh, greeting cards, video calls, WhatsApp, mm. um, 
checking in on my friends and family more, frequent conversations, Snapchat, so video chats, phone, so it's, it, those are the kind of FaceTime. Yeah. Uh, Zoom obviously is one of the options, a so Zoom, telephone, email, webinar, posting stories, order or send gifts if possible. Okay. Okay, so those are all great ways. I think everyone's, uh, we've all kind of transitioned to WhatsApp and texting and video calling. It's quite popular right now. So, you know, I, I do think it's important if you're not already to start, to, you know, trying out different apps and video calls and um, trying to see how you can talk to family. Uh, even if they're in other countries, I think, you know, we're all, it's, it's global, right? So we're all struggling. So it's, it's nice to reach out to family uh, who aren't necessarily in your city. So I do want to point out here that the resources I'll mention at the end actually do cover uh, a big a big chunk of that actually in terms of here's a great list of apps you can use. Um, so yeah, so I'll definitely be adding to that uh, later on in the presentation. So again, this is just going over some quick actions. You guys mentioned some really great ideas. So a virtual coffee and tea with a friend, maybe video chatting. Um, while you both have coffee. I did this recently actually with my brother and we both had breakfast together and uh, it was just a great experience and that was something we did as children so it was really nice. So that's a great suggestion. You could write a letter. Um, someone didn't mention that to a friend or family, uh, to a housemate, um, to your parents. I think that's a, another great kind of throwback <laughs> to use. I actually, one of my friends, she actually keeps all her cards so she has them to read when she's having a really hard time. So, you know, perhaps you can collect cards or, you know, do an exchange and have those for, you know, those moments where you're, you're really having a difficult time. Um, the last point is also just to also make sure you're enjoying your solitude. Like if you need quiet time, you know, if you need, again, some self-compassion, make sure you're taking that time as well. So this is another audience question. What do you use to help you cope with your mental health? And I'll go through uh, some practices, but I'd love to know what you guys are currently doing. I was thinking of some of the things that I do from the list that I see in front of me. So someone has posted calm.com, calm, calm mm -hmm. physical activity, painting, yoga, stay active, journaling, yoga, cooking, um, playing the keyboard, mm -hmm. um, eating well, um, music, listening to music. Um, going for walks, um, nature walks, baking, um, or doing anything you're good at, uh, meditation, <laughs> um, watching films. I, I would like to know from Netflix how much their subscription has gone up since COVID-19, yeah, I'm they, sure. They, they've made a lot of money. Let's they would have made so much money. Um, games, gardening, uh, cycling, uh, going for a walk in nature, emotional freedom technique. I don't know what that one is, but it sounds pretty interesting. Emotional freedom technique, um, watching YouTube, listening to music, baking, reboot our hobbies. So a lot of net <laughs> Netflix Prime Video, um, Mind Shift CBT app, uh, video chats, playing with my pet. This one comes from a colleague of mine. So we've all had, a, had the pleasure of uh, having her pet Zoom bomb our <laughs> office video chats. <laughs> so I know. Um, yeah, so those are, I think, great ideas. There's a, there's a long list of things that people are currently doing. Yeah, I am actually so happy to hear that list. Um, it just makes me happy to know you guys are, are doing things um, to help you with your mental health. And, and help you get through this. Um, yeah, that's, that's great to know. Uh, so I think there's also, there's also, Stephanie, uh, the bit around uh, what COVID-19 has uh, inadvertently pushed us into, right? It's uh, cleaning, sanitizing and cleaning. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> that can be a really act, a good activity in terms of mindfulness to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, so that's definitely one. That can, that can be good. Yeah, so declutter and cleaning is another one. I uh, I wanted to, I really like the one about doing things you're good at. They like <laughs> we all need that like boost of <laughs> self-esteem and feeling of purpose and you know kind of hyping yourself up a little bit, like doing things you're good at. I, I love that one. 
So I'm just going to go through a little bit of a deeper dive uh, into certain ones you guys mentioned. So this is a quote. It says, few of us ever live in the present. We are forever anticipating what is to come or remembering what has gone. So I think with this quote, a lot of us are worried about the future. So, you know, our health, our family, our loved one's health, the world, the finances, the economy, we're, we're all really kind of just thinking about the future and worrying about it. So again, what do we do to deal with this and, and kind of bring yourself to the now? And this is where mindfulness comes in. So mindfulness is the awareness that something, sorry, that that arises when we pay attention without judgment to what is happening in the present moment. So it's really about being in the present moment and grounding yourself and not worrying about the future, not ruminating on the past. It's about accepting uh, each moment, good or bad, but also really kind of zoning in uh, to right now and grounding yourself. So we do talk about this because it's a really great tool to help you keep balance and it's something that's accessible, accessible um, and, and a bit easy to practice. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. So yeah, some of you guys already mentioned this. So going for a walk, um, you can journal, you can color. So I, I want to stop a second, actually for two points right here, um, because mindfulness has become a sort of trendy topic I found in the last maybe five to 10 years. It's kind of become the cool thing to do. And I, I want you to know that it's, it's actually something that has research behind it. You know, social workers use it. It's actually a therapy. It's not just something that's, you know, a fad that's going to come and go. It's something that can really help you. I also want to stop on coloring as well. Again, it's kind of become a trendy hip thing, like coloring books for adults, et cetera. But again, it's, it's backed up by research. Coloring can be very calming, can be a mindful meditative activity. Um, some like to mention, when, when was the last time you colored? If you don't have small children. <laughs> the last time you colored was probably in your own childhood, right? And that was a time of stability and safety. Um, so yeah, so it really kind of grounds you back to that moment of uh, calmness. So again, some of this we've touched on already. So why practice it? So, um, so yeah, so the pan pandemic is happening and it's extremely stressful for all of us. Uh, we're all going to have high levels of anxiety, high levels of stress. And again, this is a skill that you can practice and can help you cope. Um, many of us are having negative thoughts and feelings uh, about health, health of our loved ones and finances. And uh, mindfulness can help you manage uh, symptoms of anxiety, stress, or mood. So similar points here, high levels. One thing I, I do want you to note here is the uh, quick reaction with emotion. So mindfulness really helps you deal with that, um, not jumping to assumptions, not kind of going right to that feeling of anger or panic or, or sadness. It, it kind of helps you to step away from that so you can react in a, a mind, more mindful way. So, so it's really important to, to know that. And I think that's why it can be even uh, more so useful right now, because I think we're all dealing with very extreme emotions. So again, the next point is more so about removing the good and the bad to see something a little bit more um, standing back and looking at it. So you're separating the helpful from the harmful without things being necessarily good or bad and categorizing them. So learning mindfulness. So this is, this is kind of the points if you are to do it and practice it. So it's really noticing the world uh, through your five senses. So through eyes, ears, nose, skin, tongue, so smell, taste, vision, etc. And uh, the quote here is smell the roses. So yes, that relates, but it's not uh, entirely what it means, but it's a nice little analogy. So it's really about controlling and shifting your focus. You're paying attention in a particular way. So if you're doing these grounding activities and these exercises with your senses and you're letting your mind and thoughts focus on that, it, it helps you when you, you are having a very difficult time and your mind's kind of going in all these ways. It helps you to kind of focus on the present and, and you have that ability to focus your attention in the long run after practicing it.
So these are just a couple more activities, yoga, et cetera, we talked about. Five things you see, five things you feel can be very helpful if you're having a panic attack or you're feeling really anxious and very emotional. It's, uh, it's to help you calm down. So you, you pretty much list off five things you see, like desk, lamp, um, tree, et cetera, and then five things you could feel, the desk in front of you, you know, the glasses on your head, the, the seat under you, and uh, it's usually combined with breathing exercises. So, you know, you breathe in between each thing you, you uh, list off. So again, it's just a, another way to do a mindfulness uh, exercise. So these are just a few goals, uh, reducing suffering, increasing happiness. An important one here is increasing how much you're able to control your mind and focus your attention as well as being flexible. I feel, and I know high levels of stress and anxiety can make you feel very narrow-minded in terms of um, being able to, you know, think of flexible ideas or solutions or being flexible even with, like your schedule. So it will help you with that as well. Um, it will help you detach from thoughts and, and images and sensations. So again, detaching from those extremely anxious or, or sad feelings. So decreasing your reactions, um, being present in your life and in the lives of your, your loved ones. So that, that's kind of an amazing thing, right? If you can practice the skill to be in the present in your life and to enjoy it, um, as well as the lives of your family and friends, um, you know, this is a good time to practice being present and really appreciate the time with your, your friends or family that you can do. So these, again, just going over quick actions. Um, so I want to mention the household chores. Uh, <laughs> I know there's a lot of that happening, but again, it can be mindful. Some people find it relaxing. You can focus on, you know, the mop in your hands, you know, what you're seeing, kind of slowing down. So it's your full attention and you're looking at things moment by moment. So two things I want to note here is that choose what works for you. If you don't want to do a like mindful headspace, you know, 10 minute uh, activity, you know, if you'd rather do yoga or even go for a walk and really, there are definitely um, activities you can do walking in terms of like paying attention to again, your physical, you know, your feet against the ground, the speed of your walking, the sun on your face. So find what works for you. Another thing uh, that's really important to mention here is that um, there are super long mindful uh, meditation activity. So some that go like 40 minutes, it's a full body scan and it, it's a little bit different. And there are super short. There's a one minute, two minute, three minute one. And I think it's important to know that because if you keep practicing the short ones, when you're having issues, um, it, it's, a, it's a nice way to do something short, right? Like you have that tool and it's a shorter thing and you can practice it enough to build it up. So research has actually shown that um, even doing that small amount of time will help you um, and build up the benefits of mindfulness. So again, I just wanna let you know, you know, there are options and different ways to do things. I, I know it's really difficult right now to incorporate certain things in your life. So I just wanted to emphasize that. So the big four is um, kind of our uh, last set of topics in terms of uh, coping skills, and managing your mental health right now. So the big four was actually created by sports psychologists. So this was actually for football players in the NHL. So NFL, sorry, <laughs> my dad would kill me. NFL. Um, so what they found was that uh, the star players were, you know, excellent during practice. They were, you know, peak performance, but then game time would come and they fumble the ball. And uh, you know, the, the coach and sports psychologists were like, what's happening? Why are they doing this? And they came up with, with this system. So it was proved to be effective. I'm not sure if uh, sports still use it. What happened was it was adopted by psychologists and researchers and then uh, trickled down to therapists and social workers, et cetera. So we all use it uh, in our field and talk about it. So, the first one you might have heard about is called smart goal setting. So it's uh, something that is specific, so detailed, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So I want to use the meditation one for an example. So 
say you want to um, meditate for two minutes a day, you're going to do it right after you shower, you change into your pajamas or robe, sit down in your bed, and you do that one to two minutes. Um, and you can measure it. Like, do you want to do this every other day? Do you want to do it twice this week and track it? Um, is this attainable? Do you think you'll actually be able to do it? Um, I think this point is very important to start small. Um, for me personally, I've been running, but I've been running super short distances because again, it gives you that motivation of, yeah, I can do this. Um, and I think that kind of, uh, it, will, it will keep you going. Uh, another point is, yeah, relevant meditation is relevant. Again, time bound. So looking at a calendar, how many times you want to do it and really setting it out. It, and this is why a lot of New Year's resolutions fail because people aren't looking through it step by step like this. So the second one is mental rehearsal. Again, this, this was proved super successful in sports. The players would visualize themselves like, you know, getting goal and doing their best and it was, it was helping. So again, visualize yourself in, in what you want to happen. Maybe it's an interview or, um, you know, time with your family or a hard conversation. Do the mental rehearsal of how you want it to go and, and perhaps what you're going to say, it does help quite a bit. The, the third one is positive self-talk. So if uh, one of your girlfriends or your sister or your, or your mother came to you and they're like, oh my God, I had a horrible day. I bombed that interview. I messed up. You would never say to them like, yeah, you did. Like you're horrible. You know, you know, why would you do that? And why didn't you practice enough? You would never say that. You would respond with kindness and patience and you would tell them, you know, how can we do this better? You probably didn't do that bad. Like I'm sure there were good moments. Um, you know, like let's get feedback and you'd be really supportive. So it's really important to take that attitude and apply it to yourself because majority of us do not treat ourselves um, in that kind of kind way. We don't give ourselves kind of empathy, compassion, et cetera. So please, you know, take a second to, to think about how you've been talking to yourself and, and um, reacting because I think that's important. The last one is just, uh, it's about arousal control in terms of deep breathing. So what we found is that North Americans don't breathe properly at all. We do a lot of shallow breathing um, in our chest. So deep breathing um, should be done using your belly, so your diaphragm, and that should be going up and down. So you can practice this at home, lying down, just put kind of a relatively heavy book on your belly and and see if it's coming up and down and, and practice until you kind of get that moment, that movement, sorry. You know, because we're not used to it, it might be tricky at first, but again, if you practice it, um, you should get better. So again, you know, deep breathing, that's gonna help you when you're having an uh, anxious situation, maybe you're nervous about an interview, being able to practice that actual deep breathing will help you calm down. So it's just another uh, skill to use. So the last slide, and I really wanted to ask, you guys had excellent answers to the other ones, but uh, this is a little bit different. Um, so what do you do for self-care? Uh, and that could be a, a lot of things, a uh, bubble bath, um, maybe you, you know, buy your, your you know, special strawberries, organic that you really like, like what are you doing for self-care? I, I want to mention here too, I think it's really important to learn how to say no to people right now. Um, say no to things that are stretching you too far or you don't have the mental capacity or emotional capacity, capacity to deal with it and say yes to the things that will help you. Say yes to self-care, say yes to walk, say yes to your friend who wants a WhatsApp and you think that would help you right now. Um, that's a crucial thing right now. So, so what do you do for self-care? I'll second that one. <laughs> I know. Um, about time for myself, art, photography, okay. reading for fun, face mask, nature walks, um, eat healthy, think healthy, end up sleeping, nature walks, a lot of walks, exercises, um, just getting a little pampering, sleeping, eating, cooking, mm -hmm. uh, uh, exercises, yeah. So those are, yeah, those are some great activities. I love to ever said, make time for yourself. Um, I think we're all trying to do a million things and be there for a million people, but what about you? I think actually chunking out and scheduling the time is really important. 
and letting people know like this is my time for me i'm sorry yeah so get adequate sleep eat mm -hmm. well remove the junk food from diets i'm mm -hmm. actually working on that one multivitamins <laughs> yeah i like multivitamins <laughs> <laughs> it is so important uh, yeah they we, we need it um connecting with family mm -hmm. um pedicure Mm -hmm. uh, some meditation and yoga. So it's a bit of what uh, you were talking about, right? So there is this bit of that uh, yoga comes with its own set of breathing exercises. So yeah, so I did. Well, I, I want to mention here again that not everything's going to work for the same people. Um, and I'm sure you guys already know this, but like if family stress, if family calls are stressing you, that might not be something that you consider self care, right? Or if you're not ready to do this for a long run, like just make sure you're doing things that you like and that you know and you're comfortable with and kind of knowing your threshold with how much you can deal with. Um, <clears throat> that's really important as well. So uh, one thing I did want to note that I forgot to mention uh, earlier was that um, with a mindfulness activity, you need to practice it when you're not feeling super stressed. So if you're having a really difficult day, you can't all of a sudden do mindfulness and you'll feel better. You have to do it when you're feeling fine so you can build that up. So, you know, if I went to good life on, like tonight, I would not wake up Saturday with like an eight pack and being able to run a marathon. That's not how it works, right? Like I have to go to good life or the gym every other day. Um, I have to run like, you know, you know, 5K, 10K and build up. So that's the same situation with mindfulness in your brain it's you have to practice it for it to work and be really useful when you're in that super stressful situation so it's just something to be uh mindful of not mindful yeah but <laughs> to consider yeah thank you guys for your answers so the next uh, few slides i'm just going to go over resources so um i think these are really great ones and they'll really resonate for everyone so the first one is called bounce back and We've actually had this program for a couple years. It was first uh, in BC and it did extremely well. So we brought it to Ontario. And uh, so it's a free guided self-help program. So it's, tele <coughs> it's telephone coaching. It's grounded in cognitive behavioral therapy, which I talked about earlier. And it's to help adults and youth 15 plus to learn skills, to better manage depression and anxiety. So you can do telephone coaching using skill building workbooks. There are a few things I want to emphasize here. The booklets are amazing. There's a, there are about 20 booklets. I'm going to pull them up quickly because I think it's important to talk about. So it's 20 booklets and the topics are all different. So one is about sleeping. And I know you guys mentioned that earlier. Um, there could be eating, um, <coughs> doing things that boost your mood and how you feel, understanding low mood. Um, Facing your fears and overcoming avoidance. You can, uh, if you're having issues with substance, substances, um, how to use exercise properly to boost yourself, how to be assertive. Assertive would be great for a lot of us right now, right? How do you say what you need? So uh, I definitely encourage you to check that out. It'll be on the website. There are also online videos. So just using that password, if you go to that site, you can actually uh, watch the videos for free. You don't need a referral at all. And it will just kind of go through practical tips. Um, that's an excellent starting point. <clears throat> so a few other things. <clears throat> you do need a referral from your doctor. Uh, you can self-referral, but you'll also have still have to uh, include your GP on, on the referral. Um, at least like provide a name and number. So uh, a few things here because of COVID, it's hard to see a doctor. So what you can do is you can call and ask for it or you can go to a walk-in clinic. So the walk-in clinics are um, doing telephone calls. So if you do a call and you, you kind of say what you're dealing with, they'll be able to refer you. And uh, so you'll re you will receive support, support sorry, within five business days. Um, I have touched base quite a bit with the bounce back team because I wanted to make sure the capacity was going to be enough and uh, they're trained quite a few, like many new staff. So don't hesitate because <clears throat> they do have the capacity and it's, uh, it's a very kind of, it's an amazing program to do right now in so many ways. And especially because you can't go anywhere in person, this is over the phone. The last thing I want to mention is 
it's actually available in many languages. So about 17 languages, um, it was a long list. And I think that's really crucial because I think some people are more comfortable <coughs> in, uh, you know, they're the first, not the first language they learn, uh, perhaps what they speak to their family with. Um, yeah, so that's just another excellent, excellent part of the program. So I will provide uh, all this information afterwards via email and I'll give it to Rika and Kathy as well. So Big White Wall is uh, a little bit similar to Bounce Back. It's free, it's safe, it's anonymous, 24 seven community support. So basically you go, you go on, so you can meet other people going through similar problems and are, who are trying to cope with depression and anxiety. And it also helps with social isolation. So, you know, we're all dealing with issues. What better way to like go online and connect with someone who's having the same issue? Um, it can be anonymous, which again is fantastic. Uh, the site is monitored by trained counselors, which is <coughs> very important if uh, you know you, someone needs crisis support or you know something they they need further support. Um, and again, it's a bunch of different courses. So one depression, anxiety, weight management. There's a whole list. Um, they also do other things in terms of creativity, and if you want to express yourself in different word, ways, like drawing, etc. I know some of you guys mentioned uh, that type of thing. So another great program to check out. So uh, these are these are resources we created for COVID. So the first one is by Mental Health Work. So it's just a tip sheet. The second one is by Bounce Back, which I just talked about. Again, it's a tip sheet. And the last one is actually uh, online resources. And this was created by CMHA National. So Again, I think it's a quite a long, I think it might be four pages and it's just resources. <coughs> so it uh, includes some, sorry, that you did mention, that some of you mentioned, like Headspace and Calm and whatnot, but there are uh, quite a few that I, I haven't even heard of, right? So it's a pretty good, long, com comprehensive list. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. Yeah, so this is more so uh, for workplaces. I What I really want you to focus in on this slide is actually CMHA. So again, I encourage you to look at our website. Um, if you feel that you can, uh, you know, go to the Toronto one and that's accessible or close distance, they have actually quite a few, <coughs> it's more than one location. The one thing is that some of it probably, some of their services have probably shifted to online, but some of it is definitely still in person. So, you know, they're having, they have PPE and it's still happening. I would just encourage you to check the website first and see updates. All the branches are pumping out incredible information. The response to this has been uh, incredible in terms of uh, staff and, and creating materials. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. <clears throat> I do think it's, it's uh, applicable across the board actually, because we're all having to be compassionate, whether that's with our partner, our kids, our friends. Um, we're all kind of also struggling and, and we have that extra burden of having to comfort others. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, this is the CMH Ontario website and uh, the bottom one is the mentalhealthworks.ca website as well. Thank you Stephanie. This was um, a ton of information. Uh, there was so much uh, to just soak in and listen. Uh, there's one question which I'm going to read out. Um, if you can quickly take it. Um, it says, is it easy to get the support from bounce back through self-referral? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's not, um, it doesn't change the difficulty. Like you can do it. You just have to make sure you have someone to sign off on it. Perfect. But, like the paperwork is something you fill out and you put the, your doctor or GP over supporting you. Uh, the other way is the doctor has the paperwork and they do it. Um, so either form is fine as long as you um, uh, follow through and have the, have the GP in either situation. It's just the extent to it they're with to which they're involved. Thank you. Um, so, you know, as we said at the beginning of this session, this is such an important topic. This is uh, an issue which a lot of people are facing with. And, um, and I think COVID-19 has just made it that much more uh, pronounced. Uh, it's made it more, it made us the whole situation more vulnerable, right? So whether it is kids who are so um, usually exposed to, they get their energy from going to school and playing with friends and from them having to uh, kind of quarantine themselves and self-isolate, 
to working professionals or those looking for job, like it, it has impacted everyone mm -hmm. and it's not going uh, away anytime soon. So thank you so much for doing this for us. So thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you everyone. Uh, really appreciate your time. A very good evening to all of you.